witnessing in our world today. Another disturbing random attack. This time it was in New York City, and the victim knows a thing or two about crime. She used to cover it as a television reporter. She spoke with Amber Cogliano. Doesn't look so great, does it? This woman's face is black and blue after she was sucker punched on Easter Sunday. I see this guy coming towards me. 75 year old Judith Thomas was walking to Easter dinner when she was attacked out of nowhere, as seen in this surveillance footage. All of a sudden, he delivers this hellacious punch right in my mouth. The suspect is seen crouching under the scaffolding and slamming his fist into Judith's face. Then you see her collapse to the ground. I was where you are standing. And when he punched me, I went down like a sack of potatoes. And then I began, I just put my face in my hands and I was saying, oh my God, oh my God, what just happened? What we have is chaos. This is happening to other people. It's happening to Asians. It's happening to lots of people. And it's crazy. It's the latest in a disturbing spate of unprovoked attacks on the streets of New York. On Saturday, a 73-year-old man was minding his own business when a deranged thug pummeled him in the face. Of course, there was the brutal assault that stirred outrage across the USA when an elderly Asian American woman was kicked in the chest and stomped on the head. Three men inside a luxury apartment building did not come to her aid, closing the door shut. The doormen have now been fired. And last October, 67 year old actor Rick Moranis was sucker punched by a stranger on the sidewalk. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Update on a road rage shooting that killed a Lancaster County mother of six. Police say 29 year old John R. Floyd was arrested this morning in Lumberton, North Carolina. He's charged with first degree murder of 47 year old Julie Eberle. She and her husband Ryan were driving to South Carolina back on March 25th when their car came close to hitting another vehicle on I 95 in North Carolina. That driver then pulled up next to them and opened fire, killing Eberle. The sheriff's office says that he's been in and out of prison for very serious crimes, felonies. In fact, he wasn't supposed to have a weapon. The name is Dewan Floyd. He was arrested at Parkview Apartments. And officers say again he shot and killed Julie Everly last week after a road rage incident on 95 South. She and her husband were headed to the beach from Pennsylvania. They were celebrating their wedding anniversary. Floyd is charged with first degree murder and discharge charging a weapon into an occupied property. He did appear in court for the first time today. The judge denied bond for him. And I just spoke with the sheriff. He slept about two hours over the past couple of days working on leads for this case and eventually catching the suspect. And he tells me about the moment when he finally did bring in the suspect to custody. Take a listen. Uh, it's sad for the family still, but I'm pleased to bring it to a, a conclusion, particularly today, because uh, Miss Julie Eberly, the uh, victim here, her funeral is today. So our detectives were able to notify the family about six o'clock this morning that the arrest had been made, and they were beyond pleased, even though you know they're going through this today. It happened during the morning rush hour. I have a male subject in an army tight suit with an AR-15. Shots fired at an office park in Frederick, Maryland. Two Navy sailors wounded, one of them critically, in an attack at an unmarked military office. One shot wound to the chest. The suspected shooter identified by authorities as 38-year-old Fantahoun Wodasenbet, also an active duty sailor, who sped off before police arrived. Suspect vehicle, black Nissan with Virginia tags. Within minutes, the suspect was at the gate to Fort Detrick, about five miles away, where he breached the checkpoint, making it about half a mile onto base with police in hot pursuit. Eventually, law enforcement shooting and killing Walter Senbet after he pulled out a weapon, his vehicle riddled with bullet holes. Did uh, exit the vehicle, uh, and that's, that's when um, our officers were able to uh, uh, neutralize uh, the subject.
and prevent further loss of life. Surveillance video from a nearby business shows one of the victims entering and seeking help moments after the shooting. The Navy says Walter Senbet was a hospital corpsman assigned to Fort Detrick since August of 2019, with previous awards for good conduct and marksmanship. But investigators aren't sure whether he knew the two victims or why he went to the off-base Navy office. The commanding general says they were already in the process of reviewing base security procedures. In light of uh, what's happened, uh, you know, certainly across the country, uh, we were about as well prepared for it as we could. Now, the FBI, local, state, and military police are combing through the evidence at a scene that looks all too familiar. Today it happened in Frederick. Uh, a week or so ago it happened in Boulder. We always hope that we don't get that call. Today we got that call. Uh, tomorrow it could be another agency. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Investigators are working to piece together a profile of Noah Green, focusing on what that 25-year-old suspect left inside the blue Nissan he smashed into the barricade and on the clues he left online. Sources tell CBS News law enforcement is pouring through social media accounts linked to 25-year-old Noah Green, looking for a motive and tracking his movements prior to the attack. Based on social media posts, it appears Green hit a low point in mid-March, writing he has been tried with some of the biggest unimaginable tests in his life and was unemployed. Green's social media activity also suggests he posted about Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, and at one point encouraged his followers to study revelations, study the signs of end times, study who the beast is, study who the Antichrist is. Noah Green also praised Farrakhan an outspoken anti-Semite, saying, My faith is one of the only things that has been able to carry me through these times, and my faith is centered on the belief of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan.